What's up guys? Hi. Uh, today we're making an OK Marti beat. Um, you may be wondering, do you have tape on your shock mount? I do have tape on my shock mount. Yeah, I have like an AKG microphone, like from the very budget line. So their mics are not like standard size, they're bigger. So you don't have much shock mounts that feed your microphone. So they usually scratch them. So I taped my shock mount. Um, regardless of that, I wanted to say a few things before starting with the video. The first one is that I'll be using Simplon patches from Prodspill. You can go to his Instagram and download them from here. You should also download this kit. It's awesome. I highly recommend it. But the Simplon patch is really good as well. Um, I made a Discord server. Uh, I'll put the invite in the description. And I wanted to say thanks to James. He's my first Patreon. So thank you, James, a lot. I sent you uh, I sent you a um, message in Patreon in case you haven't read it yet and feel free to suggest any kind of video and I'll make it unless you want me to make like only fans kind of stuff then I'm down for it let me move my camera here because um, then if not you cannot see some stuff in the piano roll um, let's just jump into the video straight I'll go first with the melody I use the Matera synth key from Prodspill and yeah I have quite some latency in this BSC, but never mind. This is how the melody would sound naturally. So I was like, this sounds good, but I want it to sound better. So I just added some EQ, took some of the annoying low end and added some reverb like this and now you have the real vibey melody it's like i need something else so i added a mallet from expense U. uh this is a half you, you know this is a must-have bst you have like a bunch of sounds that can be really useful at the time and it sounds really good overall I don't even know what I was playing. Uh, so the melody looks a bit like this. Sorry if you have like background noise, that's because I have my window open and their neighbors are working or whatever. They're on, like m making stuff in their house, like uh, renovating it, I guess. So what I did with this mallet was like, I sent the clean signal to the channel four and I made two buses. I disconnected this bus from the master and I connected it to the channel 3 and 2 and these two respectively connected them to the master. So I have a channel that is being sent to two different channels and it's being disconnected from the master. So we have channel 3 and 2 sending sound. On channel 3, I just lowered down the volume and separated the stereo, you know? Why I did this instead of just sending it to the channel 2? Because if I send it to the channel 2 and then I lower this sound, I'll lower the sound on channel 2 as well. And I don't want to, I mean, some people would just consolidate the tracks, you know, and use them as dot waps or something. But I don't really like working with samples. I rather work with just BST. So I come in here, turn my volume down, and this is how my mallet sounds now. But I was like, this sounds dry, but I want to have like both the clean signal and the reverb signal. So I just sent it to this track and added some reverb. So now you have this super vibey mallet, you know? That if we listen to the two melodies together, it sounds like this. Look, let me show you. It sounds pretty evil, you know? I checked some of like OK Mars tracks and he has beats that sound very evil in my opinion, you know? So for the drums, they're nothing from outer space. They're like pretty simple. We have this tick transition when the drums come in. I used my hi-hat preset from my experimental sound kit, which I'll be releasing a new sound kit soon. It will be free for all the patrons prior to the drop. I assume it will be dropping last week of December. Um, but if you were subscribed to my Patreon before that, you'll get it for free. You know, it's a way of saying thank you. Uh, we have this open hat here in the second eight bars when the mallet comes in again. 
I used again the op like the um, I had preset on the open hat and penny to the left uh, because I just wanted to have like the small reverb and delay thingy on my open hats. And then we have the main drums, which sound a bit like this together. Nothing too crazy, it's just like bounce, you know. You need your drums to not sound like they're dead. You need to remember the drums, you know. So you have already seen the 808, nothing too crazy. I just turned the volume all the way up. And I think I boosted it a little. No, I didn't boost it here. But as you can see, the 808 isn't like the 3 decibels, like minus 3 decibels, it's kind of clipping, you know. We have a clap, regular clap, nothing crazy. There is no effect on this, and I'll explain later what's going on in here that you can see here. Yeah, don't kill me for that. Hey, guess who's back? Who else could it have been? I don't know. Um, I'm recording this, both recording, so right now, I guess you have a white and black picture of me or some dumb stuff um, this is something i mentioned in the first video but not in this one and it is that in most okay more tracks i heard it is that the hi-hats are not really that much in the foreground they're more in the background and most of the bounce on the drums are due to the 808 and the relationship it has with the claps and snares but not really with the hi-hat okay more uses beats that mainly has the Mexico drew hat that's like really short and doesn't have much body or the hi-hats are either like really spare and it's not they're not like over long there's not really rolls or they're just low in volume and that may just be a coincidence or it's just me part of it just may be part of the style of producers like Jake Henson and producers in Crest so watch out for that I'm about to lose like I'm about to and my recording time in a full studio and watch out um, to not overdo your hi-hats. Um, we have a hi-hat which I added again the same preset. I'll always, I always use this preset, it's my favorite preset. So you can just slap it in and then like take down the volume and that's a hi-hat preset I always use. Something you need to do is playing with the velocity of your hi-hats, you know. Your hi-hats cannot sound like this. I mean they can, but they will be boring, so remember to always play with the velocity to get like cool effects like this. And we have a bongo and a perk, which are pretty much just adding filling noise, and we have this cool perk right here. And that's it for the beat, that's literally the whole beat. In the master, what I did was, okay, first. If you're into mixing or like audio engineering or just mixing and mastering overall, you'll see this chain and you go fucking nuts because you'll see this and you'll say, bro, what are you even doing? First, you shouldn't add reverb to your master. That's something that happens when you add an effect to a bunch of channels at the same time and it's that you kind of glue them together. What I mean with this, if you add reverb to six tracks at the same time, let's say I have six milliliters here, I make a bus for the six of them and add reverb to the six of them at the same time, I'll uh, glue my melodies together because the reverb will, will sound like, my reverb will sound like it's part of the six sounds and the six sounds will sound more close to each other. So that's a technique that you can use and you can also apply that for compression. It really works for compression and you can get this compressor called the glue. It's a really good compressor, um, and I highly recommend it. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice, it's I woke up some hours ago and I have been like crispy voice ever since. Um, then we have soft clipper, which I threw the threshold down and added post gain just to make the sound clip because if not, it would sound like this. It's not the same if I do this, look. You can hear how it changes and how it clips, you know? And I honestly like that. Um, it's not very good from a point of like, it's not good from a mixing perspective, but it sounds actually dope, you know? And then we have EQ2, which I'm just taking the high end out to make my hi hats and claps and all the high end make it more like present, you know? So if you listen to this and like, on a car, this will sound very good because you have like very present low end but also very present high end i added some more 
EQ even here, but that's not really necessary, you know? This is just what I added on the master, and I think I had this already on, which is like the reverse polarity, which it doesn't make much. Let me show you what it does. In case you didn't know some, what it means with reversing polarity, let me find This may work. No, this may not work. I want to find an example where I can show it. If I reverse the polarity, you see how the sound like, you know, let me show you this way. Let's see, let's say I have two sounds. For example, I have this sub. Let me turn off the growth speed. I have this sub and then I have this other sub, which I make unique and then I reverse it. What I'm ha what's happening here, even though I have two sounds, this one has its polarity reversed. So there's something happening that's called uh, destructive interference. So basically what happens is that you have two waves. You know, let's say I'm going to open paint for this. Let's say you have a sine wave, which looks a bit like this, you know? This is your sine wave. What happens if I make a sine wave that has the exact same pattern? I mean, a sine wave always looks the same. It's a harmonic wave. But what happens if I have a sine wave that looks exactly the same, but it's reversed? You know, like its polarity is reversed. It will look like this. And what's the problem with that is that you have something, it won't look really like this, but you get my point. What happens is that you get something called reverse polarity. Basically, you have two waves that are the same, but one is reversed. So sound plus sound equals less sound. It's hard to get. Um, reversing the polarity in your master literally doesn't make a change. It's just adding more stuff to the chain. It makes no sense, and I think I got this, except for the reverb from a mixing chain I found somewhere. So I think that's why this was on, but I felt like explaining it, you know? If you reverse the polarity of two sounds like this, you'll get no sound because of that. What happen What is happening is you have destructive interference between them two, because the waves are colla like, clap like collapsing, we could say. And when you have an up here, you have a down here, so basically you have no sound. And I don't even know why I explained that using paint when I'm making an OK Mars IB tutorial. That's kind of insane. But after that explaining, I hope you learned something today. And that is that if you reverse the polarity of one sound and you kept the one with the normal polarity, it, you will get no sound. But well, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I have been kind of procrastinating and I didn't like the original take. So this is like the 11th time I record this video. The first one I even spilled coffee on my keyboard. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something and I guess I'll see you in a few days. Let me know in the comments what you want to what you want me to record and if you're my Patreon, just send me a message saying make this and I'll make it. So bye, I guess I'll see you in the next one.